Hello everyone, welcome to the day two of the five day question series. Today I have chosen topic for classification of the field crops and my name is Hansa Nora Sama and I have done my masters in nematology which is under agriculture. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for further notification. Moving on to the first question. Uh, which of the following statement is true on the basis of angiosperms? So before going to the question, let me just briefly discuss to you about there are about the field crops and the, the classifications. Uh, basically, it has uh, we we can classify the field crops into various uh, on the basis of various classifications, such as on the basis of say climate. on the basis of its lifespan, seasons, its root system, its economic importance, its botanical description. So moving on to this question again, so it's this angiosperm. If we look into the more detail of the classification, it belongs under the botanical classification. Okay, so basically uh, under the plant kingdom in spermatophytes, the field crops, they are divided into angiosperms as well as gymnosperms. Okay, so yes, you can see this diagrammatic representation here. And what are angiosperms? Angiosperms are usually an ovules which are enclosed in an ovary wall. And on the, on the other hand, gymnosperms, these are seeds which are enclosed, uh, which are not enclosed or naked. Right, so under that, under angiosperm, we can further divide it into monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Okay, so moving on, let's move on to the question again. So there are seed producing plants which whose seeds are enclosed in an ovary. So this is correct for angiosperms. Bougainvillea can be considered as an angiosperm. This is correct as angiosperms belong to plants which are flower bearing All right and so th these are softwood no this is not correct as angiosperms belong to hardwood the fourth one says cedrus deodara is an example of an angiosperm cedrus uh, belongs to a gymnosperm because it, it's not a flower bearing tree and uh, it has the leaves are also a needle like okay so uh, let's move on to the options options number one three and four this is not correct Op b which says one two and three which is also not correct so the option c says one and two which is correct so i have written i've given a small differences between the angiosperm and the gymnosperms. So I would like to request you all to make notes simultaneously as I'm speaking so that it'll be much more easier for you to prepare. Okay, the first one, it is a seed producing flowering plants whose seeds are enclosed with an ovary. All right, so these are hardwood and gymnosperms, on the other hand, they are non-flowering plants whose seeds are unenclosed or they are naked and these are softwood. Some of the examples of angiosperms, as, I, as I've mentioned earlier, the angiosperm can be further divided into monocots as well as dicots. So some examples of monocots would be lilies or, or orchids, or gaves, okay? So, and, and some of the grasses. And dicots, on the other hand, some of the examples for dicots would be roses, peas, sunflowers, oaks, and maples. So for gymnosperms, they are usually a cone bearing or a needle like uh, leaves bearing trees which will belong to the category for pine for firs and cedars so cedrus deodara is also known as cedars okay moving on to the next question so which of the following is true in relation to dicotyledonous plant so it's an angiosperm it's a branch of an angiosperm so uh, if you can go down here, you can see that I've given a diagrammatic uh, representation of monocots as well as dicots. 
So let's read the differences between a monochord and dichord and then we'll go back to the question. First of all, let me try to explain what a cotyledon is, okay? A cotyledon is a leaf, is an embryonic leaf bearing It's actually an embryonic leaf which can be found in a seed bearing plant. All right, so uh, in this case, on the basis of this cotyledon, this angiosperms can be divided into monocots as well as dicots. So monocots, they have a single cotyledon, one cotyledon and dicots have two cotyledons okay so moving on to the diagram so it has one cotyledon dicots have two cotyledons so veins of the leaves are usually parallel okay so that's in the case of monocots and in the case of dicots the veins usually are net like so it's usually in a very it's in a net like or a web-like, web or a net-like. But in case of monocots, it's usually just, the veins are usually just parallel to each other. And the stems, the, the vascular bundles, they're usually com uh, complexly arranged, whereas in dicots, they are arranged in a ring manner. So the, on, the, on the basis of the roots, the fibrous root uh, system is present in the monocots and the taproot system is present in the dicots. And the floral parts or the petals, they are usually arranged in the multiples of tree. It means that suppose this is a flower. So these are the petals and it's usually in the multiples of tree. The petals are usually in the multiples of tree. That's in case of monocots, whether in dicots, uh, the floral parts are usually in the multiples of four or five, which means that the petal arrangement is in the multiples of four or five. Let's go back to the question. So which of the following is true in relation to the dicotyledonous plant? Number A, a seed containing one cotyledon, which is wrong since it contains, it, it consists of two cotyledons. And number B, they, are, they have a fibrous root system, all right? So this is also wrong. Floral part in multiples of four and five. So this is right. So the correct answer is number C. Moving on to the next question. So I would like you all to comment the answer for this question. So this is on the basis of, I'll give you a rough idea for this question. This is on the basis of uh, classification on the, its economic importance. So you can see field crops can be uh, divided uh, on the basis of economic importance and further it can be divided as cereal crops, fiber crops, oil crops, okay, vegetable crops, forage, narcotic crops, etc. There are a list of about uh, 9 to 10 uh, types of uh, the uh, types of uh, the classification for on the basis of economic importance. So I've just listed a few and I would like you all to list the rest of the um, uh, type of crops in the comment section as well as the answer for this. Moving on to the fourth question, which of the following statement is true on the basis of Zaid crops? So this is on the basis of classification on seasons, okay? We can subdivide it into three parts, which is Kharif, okay, and we have um, Rabi crop, all right, and we have Zaid crop. So the Kharif crop is also known as the monsoon. 
crop. This is known as the winter and this is known as the summer. All right. So usually uh, the crops are usually grown uh, from the month of October, uh, from the month of June to October and rabi from November to Feb and zaid crops from March to April or June. All right. So, so curry crops, they're monsoon crops and then monsoon crops and then they have they need a warm, wet, and humid weather. Whereas ruby crops, they need um, dry and um, cool temperature or environment. And they need a warm but dry. Plus dry, they are usually long day plant, which needs a day length of a, for more than 12 hours, 12 hours and even the rubby crop is also they belong to the long day and kharif they belong to short day so some of the examples for kharif crops would be rice maize bajra all right and for rubby crops we have um chickpeas grams or all the legumes and for uh, zaid crops we have all the watermelon cucumber pumpkin etc so let's move on to the question again so which of the following statement is true on the basis of zaid crops so the first one says require long day length for flowering and fruiting this is true the second one says cucumber is a zaid crop this is true again and they are some the third one says there are summer crops and grown between march and june this is also absolutely correct so the last statement which says there are summer crops and are grown between june to september so this is wrong so the correct answer from here would be b which says one two and three all right, so the last question says, which of the following is not a field crop? So for that, you need to know the basic clear idea about what a field crop is. So I've written the, the definition of field crops out here, so you can read it along with me. It is, an, it is any of the herbaceous plants grown on a large scale in cultivated fields for agriculture purpose only. So remember, these field crops are grown in a large scale only for the purpose of for agriculture. All right, so this primarily they belong to forage crops, grains, sugars, oil, and fiber. So what comes under forage crops, uh, for example, grasses, right? And under grains, we have maize, ri rice, pulses, all right? And we, on the sugar, we have um, sugar cane and be sugar beets, etc. Under oil, we have castor oil, sunflower, sesame. So fi for fiber, we have cotton. And we have jute, etc. These field crops only further updates and notifications. Thank you so much.